What's going on guys? Johnny Bubbles back with another how-to video. Today, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to apply a pair of rejuvenated soul shields onto these Jordan 1 Spideyverse that have this nice icy blue translucent outsole. So without further ado, let's get bubbly. All right guys, before I get started, let me go ahead and tell you guys what a Soul Shield is. Because as some of you guys may know, I am the customer service manager here, so I get a lot of phone calls. And people ask, yo, what's a Soul Shield, you know? So let me go ahead and just tell you guys what it is. Basically, what it is, is it's a film that goes on the bottom of your shoe. So let me go ahead and pull this out. And what it does is it keeps the outsoles looking super crispy. Now, for translucent outsoles like this one, you know how like sometimes you get like that yellowing, kind of like on the 11s. 11s get that a lot because they have the icy bottoms. You'll get yellowing due to oxidation and wear, and that's just gonna happen over time. The sole shield will go ahead and prevent that from happening as long as it's on the shoe properly. But if it's not, you might have some spots that do get yellow. But no worries, guys. For this video, I am only gonna be doing the left side and not the right, and then I'm gonna wear it for a while, and then I'll show you guys later on in this video a side-by-side -side comparison of what it looks like to have one on and have one off. Now, moving on, guys, that's just a quick brief what it does for you. The items that come in it are two films, one for the left, one for the right, and these do fit up to about a size 13, guys. That's a question we get a lot, too, is what size does it fit up to? It's about a size 13. Any larger than that, unfortunately, we don't have anything to protect it. So it's gonna be two of those. It's gonna come with two alcohol prep pads, and that's gonna be used to go ahead and prep the bottom of the sole before applying the shield. And then last but not least, it's gonna come with four traction pads. And what these allow you to do is get grip from the shoe because since it is a plastic film, it's slippery, but these traction pads will make sure that you're able to not slip and slide and you're okay to ride. But all right guys, that's the products that come inside Rejuvenators. So shields, you can go ahead and make sure you find that at rejuvenator.com. We have the link in the description below. So now I'm gonna go ahead and move this right shoe over to the side and get started. All right guys, so the items that you're gonna need for this social application are very simple. A heat gun, you don't need one this crazy. Um, but you can find one at your local hardware store for a few bucks. A pair of scissors and a pen and a towel. And the towel is just there so I can apply pressure so I don't burn my hand. But that's all you need for the social shield application and obviously the soul shield itself. But the first step guys is to prep the outsole. Even though this shoe is dead stock, it still has a little bit of like, you know, residue on it and stuff from the factory. So you wanna go ahead and take out the prep pad and just make sure you have a thorough cleaning on the entire outsole. I am done using the alcohol prep pad on the outsole of this shoe. Now, if you're wondering if you could apply sole shields to a pair that was already worn, yes, you can, but you wanna make sure you clean the outsole with our advanced sneaker cleaning solution and a stiff brush. Make sure you get it as clean as possible, let it dry, and then you'll move on to the next step, which I'm gonna show you now is tracing onto the sole shield film itself. So what you're gonna wanna do is take the glossy side and put it face down. There is a matte side and a glossy side. You want the matte side facing up so you can go ahead and trace on it. I'm gonna go ahead and put it almost in the center as much as possible. Now I'm gonna take my pen here and I'm gonna trace. Now you can start wherever you want, the middle, the front, the back. I always just start at the toe box. It's just easiest for me and I just go around the shoe. Now that I'm done with the tracing guys, let me go ahead and show you what that looks like. You don't have to be perfect, so don't worry if it doesn't align on the toe box. Not sure if you can see that so much on the camera. 
but you don't have to be perfect. Just make sure you go ahead and get around the entire shoe. Now, the next step is gonna be cutting the trace line. Now, there's two ways that you can do this. You can either cut on the inside of the trace line, which is gonna be here on the inside or on the outside. The main difference with that, guys, is real simple. If you cut, up, if you cut on the outside line, it's gonna come up higher on the midsole. I personally like that. It creates a better hold and just allows dirt to not come into the sole. Uh, but if you didn't want to show it or you didn't want to protect a little bit of the midsole, you can cut on the inside of the trace line and that'll be a perfect like shield on the bottom and it won't come up at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys the way I like to do it, which as I mentioned is on the outside of the trace line. So go ahead and check out that sole shield, guys. Don't worry about being perfect. You don't have to be super spot on, but as you can see, this is what it looks like after you are done cutting out the trace line. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put this on the floor because I don't think they had the trash can here. I'm gonna take the shoe. Now, I'm using a table here, but if you don't have a table, you can put it in between your legs, hold it there. Just make sure you have a towel like across your lap, just so that way when you start using the heat gun, it doesn't like get too crazy hot on your thighs. So the next step guys is to peel the film away from the mat side. And pretty much you can grab it from either the heel or the front, it's up to you. You just peel it away. Should we? Pull it close to the mic. Yeah, yeah. A few weirdos out there that like that sound. Now that the film is separated from that matte side, guys, the sticky part is the section that you want to go ahead and apply to the sole itself. I always like to start with the heel and then move forward to the toe. So I go ahead and just line it up. Now you don't have to be perfect here guys because you're not applying heat and you're not applying pressure. So you wanna just make sure you line it up to wherever you want it. So I'll move this back. I tend to get a lot of heel drag so I would put the film a little bit more back than in front of the toe just because as I mentioned, I drag my feet a lot. So I'll put that up there. See, it's a little too much. All right, I think that's about where I want the film to be. Now, once you get it to where it looks good to you, now you can start applying pressure. Now, this part is very important, guys. If we don't apply pressure first, it's gonna be a little trickier for the film to adhere to the sole when you use the heat. So make sure you take your time, apply pressure on the entire sole and get it looking nice and even. The sole shield is on the shoe, guys. I went ahead and applied pressure on the entire thing, making sure that it was nice and even. The main reason why I like to apply pressure first is just to try to get as much air bubbles out as possible, guys. So I don't know if you were noticing, I like to apply pressure from the inside and out and that allows for any air bubbles as much as possible to come out. And then I like to go ahead and just fold it over the edges. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and grab the heat gun here. And here's the reason why I use a towel, guys. When the heat gun is on, it gets very hot. So I like to apply it, making sure not to over apply heat because you can shrink up the sole shield if too much heat is applied. So you make sure you just go ahead and apply it, watch it fold over, and then use your towel to go ahead and move on the so shield and press down to make sure it gets into the grooves. So let's do it now.
Real quick tip guys, as you can see, when I am applying pressure with the towel, you wanna make sure you just either push down or do this like rolling action. You never wanna pull when the soul shield is hot. You can um, tear it if you are too rough on it. So just make sure you do a little nice roll motion outwards from the inside out or just push down the pressure, never pull. All right guys, as I just mentioned, you don't wanna to apply too much heat and too much pressure because you can cause it to tear. Now, I'm not sure if the camera can go ahead and pick it up, but right here in this section, I applied too much heat and too much pressure. So when I pushed down, it got stuck to the towel and when I pulled up, it tore it. Now, this is why you wanna be extremely careful don't over apply heat and don't over apply pressure. Now I'm not too worried guys because I am gonna put a traction pad over this section here, which the traction pad will go ahead and cover it, but just be careful in the future. Thanks guys. Let's continue putting some heat on the rest of the shoe. So I am done applying heat to the entire sole, guys. As you can see, it went ahead and adhered perfectly to the shoe. There is no parts of the edge that are coming up. That's one important thing, guys. If you see some of the edges are starting to rise, make sure you apply a little more heat and then apply pressure to go ahead and put it down. This one looks pretty spot on, guys. But once again, that's because I'm a professional. So I'm pretty good at this. And it looks really, really good. Now the next step, guys, is to grab two traction pads because we recommend two traction pads per shoe. Now, if you wanted to cut these, you can. You can put one little half section here, one here, and one here. I don't do that. I just put one on the whole back, one on the front, and that gives me enough traction to walk all day. So that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do next. So let's do it now. All right guys, so as I mentioned before, uh, there was a hole right here and I wasn't too worried because of the traction pad. Go ahead and check that out. The hole is now covered with that traction pad. Now that the traction pads are applied, guys, as you've seen, all I did was put them on the, the sole, apply pressure, and that was pretty much it. One quick tip that I wanna give you guys is if you wanna get a better stick for the traction pad, you can go ahead and just apply some heat to the traction pads, and that's pretty much it. So I'm gonna show you guys that now. That's gonna go ahead and wrap it up, guys, for this Soul Shield application. Let me show you guys what it looks like side by side. Remember, this is the one I applied it to, and this is the one that I did not. Now, I am gonna wear both shoes, guys, and show you guys what it looks like in just a little bit, so stay tuned for this video, but make sure, wait, how do I do this outro then, since I'm gonna have a two-parter? All right, guys, I am back. It's been a couple weeks since I've been wearing these every single day to test out the Soul Shield. Let me go ahead and turn it over and show you guys how well the Rejuvenator Soul Shield did. So remember, I only applied it to the left shoe and not the right, and I only wore it for a couple weeks, guys, so it's not gonna be too crazy, but go ahead and check that out. Real quick, I'm gonna put this right shoe to the side. A few things I wanna point out, guys, is this back heel right here. As you can see, I get a lot of heel drag, um, so I should have went over the heel a little bit more, so I'd recommend is if you do get more heel drag than normal, go ahead and go a little bit more over the heel so that way it protects it, so that way it's not peeling like it is here. But luckily, it didn't remove the whole sole shield. Also guys, 
The front here seems to have folded up as well. Not too crazy bad because I don't kick the front of my shoe. So it wasn't too bad, but overall I'm very satisfied with the results of the Soul Shield. So let's go ahead and pull them off. So there it is guys, I went ahead and pulled off the Soul Shield and as you can see, the bottom is still looking super icy besides the part that peeled over here in this back heel and a little bit on that toe box or toe cap here. Now real quick guys, a lot of questions that I get on the customer service side is, does the Soul Shield leave residue? And as you can see, it didn't. It didn't leave any residue. It was super easy to peel off. That's another question we get as well. How hard is it to peel it off? And although it sticks really, really well, it isn't that hard. A little bit of like pulling motion and I was able to get this whole Soul Shield out. If you want to go ahead and pick up a pack of Soul Shields, make sure you shop at reshoeminator.com. We are also going to have a link in the description below with a nice little promo code for you. If you're not already subscribed, guys, hit that subscribe button and turn on that little not notification bell so you know every time we post a video. That's going to be it, guys. I'm Johnny Bubbles. I'll see you next time.